Capacitors can store electric charge. And I wanted to build one so that I can store some electric charge myself, you know, just in case. I made this capacitor out of aluminium foil and baking paper. Since I would end up rolling this capacitor into a scroll, I needed two layers of foil and two layers of paper. I put the first layer of paper on the floor, on top of which I put the first layer of foil. Then I put the second layer of paper and then the second layer of foil on top of this. The second layer of paper would ensure that the two pieces of foil do not touch each other because they are the two plates of the capacitor. When it was time to roll up the capacitor, it turned out that the foil and paper would buckle unevenly, creating folds that were next to impossible to avoid. If I were to do this again, I would probably glue the foil to the paper, even if this would require a lot of glue. Eventually, I wrapped the capacitor around a threaded rod to, for the sake of convenience. When I was done, I removed the threaded rod. Uh, the only thing left to do was to make the wiring for this capacitor. If you have a wire stripping device, then use it. If you don't have it, you can also use an X-Acto knife to remove the coating of the wire, even though that would be more difficult. To ensure good contact between the wires and the capacitor plates, I spread the threads of the wires, as shown in the video, and then checked the conductivity with a multimeter. After that, I only needed to wrap the capacitor with some tape to make sure it stays together. To test the capacitor, I connected its terminals to the positive and negative terminals of a cell battery in order for it to charge. For this, capacitor polarity does not matter because it is not an electrolytic capacitor. Then I disconnected the capacitor from the positive terminal of the battery and connected it to the anode of an LED, the cathode of which was connected to the negative terminal of the battery and the other terminal of the capacitor. This way the charge should flow through the LED, making it light up. As shown in the video, the LED does indeed light up, indicating that the capacitor works. Now, the question that all of you are probably asking is, what is the capacitance of this thing? Since I do not have a farad meter, there's only one way to know. That is to measure the time it takes for the voltage or current to drop by one half or one quarter and from there deduce the constant tau in the equation of voltage and current discharge of a capacitor and rearrange the equation for tau to find the capacitance. I tested this method both with my capacitor as well as with a capacitor of a known value and the empirically found capacitance of the known capacitor was different from the actual value by orders of magnitude and therefore I do not consider the estimation for my homemade capacitor to be accurate. A capacitor like this may be fun to make for entertainment or educational purposes, however I do not think that I will be using this in any of my projects because this is way too unreliable for precise applications.